Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video we're going to take a look at how we can use the IHTTP client factory interface in order to create high performing resilient HTTP clients in our .NET Core application. This code is also true for console applications as long as you're using dependency injection. But before I dive into the code, I want to remind you that until the 1st of February 2020, I'm running a giveaway in collaboration with JetBrains, giving away 5 one year free JetBrains rider licenses. Rider is the ID I'm using and I highly recommend it. In order to participate, make sure you subscribe and the sub notification bell, have your subscriptions public and complete the form that you can find in the description down below. This video is part of my .NET Core series, so if you don't want to miss any episodes, make sure you subscribe and the sub notification bell to get notified when I upload a new episode. So what I have here is a simple application. It's a Blazor server-side application just because it's effectively an ASP.NET Core project and this allows me to easily showcase a client making a call and getting some data. So if I just run this application, I'm going to show you what I have here. So as you can see, that's all you have in the website. I'm using the GitHub API to get some information about an account. So if I put my information here and I click load account info, you can see that it takes some time, but eventually it will call the GitHub API and get all my account info. This is all public information. Things like my followers URL, my uh, image, stuff like that, it's all here. And then I can use another uh, username and I'll be able to get the information for that other username as well. It's a bit slow, but you're getting the point. This is all we're doing here. And if I go at the code in here in the uh, GitHub search component, you will see that I'm actually creating a new HTTP client every time I'm specifying the URL and some uh, headers that I need to specify and then I'm calling and getting it back as a string. Now, this is a very inefficient way of doing it because we're creating a new HTTP client and all the handlers associated with it every single time and we don't really want to do that because as the description of this class is actually explaining, the handler underlying here is also disposed once the client itself is disposed, which is once this method is actually finished executing. If I stop this project, I want to talk about this idea of the IHTP client factory. And this was added back in Donor Core 2.1, I think, or 2.2. Um, and it's a very helpful interface that you should know about whenever you're calling an external API. Uh, what this allows us to do is to effectively reuse all the handlers used in our HTTP clients by giving names to those clients. Internally, if I just decompile the HTTP client class, I think it's worth taking a look to see what's happening. We have the HTTP client handler, which is created every time we create this class in this specific scenario. And then we have an implementation on how we can actually make that call. The idea is that the actual calls are not happening on the HTTP client level, but they're happening on the handlers that the HTTP client is using. And in some scenarios, you can think of handlers like Midwest as well. They can fit that purpose and we might have a video for that. Now, all you need to know is that in order to optimize around that, until now we were essentially creating a singleton HTTP client, which we were using across the whole application. Because creating one every single time and creating all the handlers associated with it was not efficient. Now, what the .NET Core team did for us is they allowed us to use and register this interface that can just create clients and reuse or pull the handlers that those clients use. And this solves all the potential issues that we could have like socket starvation, DNS issues and all that. And in this video, I'm going to show you how exactly you can do it. It's actually very, very easy. The first thing I need to do is I want to go to the startup.cs and down here in the configure services method, I'm going to add a single line and this will be the services dot add HTTP client and I'm going to use this method and then I'm going to choose the one that starts with a string here and says name as the string and then the client configuration. The name I'm going to give to this client is GitHub because this will be a named client used just for GitHub. And then I'm going to expand on that and I'm going to go back to the GitHub search component and see what I created here. And I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to paste it here. And then I'm just going to say client dot base address and column and then client dot default request headers. And in this scenario, I need to change this to the add alternative. So add the accept header with this value. You don't need to know these headers by heart. They're required by the GitHub API. And then if I copy it again, I need to also add a user agent or else the API will reject me. 
So I just transferred all that configuration from the new HTTP client over here to my dependency injection uh, and I created a named client, a named HTTP client called GitHub. And now let's see how we can access that through dependency injection. Since this is a Razor component, I can simply do uh, create a property and uh, I'm going to use the IHTTP client factory interface and give that the name. And then on top of it, I'm going to add the inject attribute. If you're using an ASP.NET Core application or you're injecting this on a regular class, you would go down the normal path of just injecting it through the constructor. Since this is a Razor component, I don't need to do that. And now I have my client factory and what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that and I'm going to say var HTTP client equals HTTP client factory dot create client and I just specify the name of the client since this is a named client. So I'm going to copy GitHub and I'm going to put that here and I'm going to stick a breakpoint here. I'm going to delete that line and I'm going to debug the project and go back to the front end and show you how this works. So I have my project again and then I'm going to put my username and I'm going to click load account info. And going back here, you will see that I hit the breakpoint and if I step over it, you will see that I have an HTTP client because I used the name of this GitHub client. It's worth showing that if I run the evaluation window here, uh, evaluation window is a feature of Riser that allows you to run code during runtime, same way that you use uh, immediate window in uh, Visual Studio. So if I do GitHub, you will see that I'm getting a new HTTP client every time, but I'm reusing the underlying handlers. And of course, as you can see, I have my base address predefined and the headers I defined in the DI. If I delete that and I say, for example, YouTube, I am still getting a client back, but I have nothing set for it. I have no base address. I have no headers. You need to go and set them yourself if you want to use them. And then if we call this, you can see that we get the account info back. And if I go back at the front end, as you can see, it's loaded. Something else I want to show you is that if I change what I'm uh, querying against, so I'm going to use this name instead, you will see that significantly faster than what you saw before. And that's because we essentially are reusing all the handlers, creating the HTTP uh, client object is cheap. Creating the handlers isn't so much. Not only we're making it more efficient in terms of resources, but we're also making it faster. Now, the question is, how do we also make it resilient? And what do we mean by resilience? Well, when I have an HTTP client, which is making an external call, this call needs to succeed. So if I have a transient error, like an HTTP request exception, or a 500, or on the spectrum of 500 requests, or a 408, then these are considered transient errors. It, it means that if you retry that thing, it might not actually fail. It was just a temporary hiccup. That's how at least I imagine it. So how can we make this HTTP client to know how to effectively retry on transient errors? Well, the donor core team has us covered as well. If I go to the manage package in NuGet and I say microsoft.extensions.http.poly, you will find this project and I'm going to go ahead and add it to my project. And now that this is installed, what I get is an extension method. Well, I get a few, but one that I care about really, really much. If I go back in the startup.cs, you will see I have this add HTTP client. And if I chain a dot after defining all the settings for my GitHub API, I can also say add transient HTTP error policy. And I can define a poly policy, poly it's a package that handles retries and circuit breakers and stuff like that. I'm going to leave a link in the description down below. Uh, and I can define a retry policy in case of a transient HTTP error. And like I said, a transient HTTP error in this context is a 500 plus error, a 408 or an HTTP request exception. And here I can define my policy. So I can say policy dot, I'm going to use a wait and retry async policy. And I'm going to retry for three times. And I'm going to say that I want to uh, wait between my retries for a time span of from milliseconds 300. So wait for 300 milliseconds and retry for maximum of three times and then throw an exception. And this will essentially guarantee that if it was a transit error and within that single second that I'm retrying three times, the error is gone, 
the user will not see an exception. The request will succeed potentially in the second or third retry. This was just a very short and very quick video showing you this feature because I know and I've seen a lot of code that people get this wrong and it's very easy to actually get right if you use the HTTP client factory. So please use it to make your applications more efficient. I am planning to make a full video with all the features of HTTP client factory without really looking too much into the retrying. This is an everyday scenario that I want you all to be optimized for, however. That's all I had for you for today. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my GitHub sponsors for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this, and ring the bell as well to get notified when I upload a new episode, and I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.